Hey guys, good afternoon. Uh, first, that's a pleasure for me to be here, to join this meeting, to join this road show 2013. Uh, so, we will talk about some new opportunities in the market. As we know, PIC has been select, selecting picks for several years for heavy market uh, picks. And I think that uh, we are on time to take advantage of it to our systems. Okay? So today, you take this in consideration. And uh, regarding this, this point, the four major factors involved to have market pigs are the value, facilities, feed, and some environmental conditions. Okay? Regarding the value, uh, pounds market, we understand that we have extra pounds market, but we also understand that we need to invest extra money on feed. Carcass value, we have added value as well. E, but we need to consider that some point that we have, uh, for example, extra cost with extra mortality. Okay. Uh, regarding the facilities, we need to see that uh, our pigs will be wider and taller. The same way, fewer pigs will be loaded per truck. Uh, regarding the feed, four or five weeks extra on the facilities will have extra 10% increase on everyday intake, okay? Uh, ample capacity and filler space also will be needed. And we, cannot, and we need to understand that if we use low energy diets, we need really to evaluate it because we can take advantage using higher energy diets to decrease the competition on feeders, okay? And environment. As the pigs grow, more heat they will produce. So, for sure, they respond better to the cooler temperatures, okay? So, uh, I'm well, I'm, 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 I'm good in here, in this position, for everybody, okay? Okay, so, Fox in value. Historically, we understand that year after year, we increase weighted sales by two or three pounds, okay? But some new opportunities in the market, as uh, PD has shown has show us some new uh, uh, ways to go. I mean, uh, in one PD virus challenge, we decrease by 10% the volume of annual import produces. That's because we understand that we will not win things for uh, three or six weeks. Okay, so it opened uh, an opportunity for increasing space in finisher sites, and we can add extra margin over the feed. Also. We will have we will take advantage of improvement of pounds marked per salt per year. Okay. Uh, what is the return when you move from a 264 pounds P to 307 pounds pounds P? So extra 53 pounds of P per year per pig. So we have 16 extra pounds per space. Uh, per space on, on finished facility per year, okay? <clears throat> so it means for us, if you have a barn, 1,200 hex, we would produce 19,300 extra pounds of pork per year. What does it mean? 1,391 pounds of pork per sow per year. That's equivalent up to 5.25 Pigs marked at 264 pounds. Okay. Regarding some advantages in salt cost and extra margin, here we see that uh, the salt cost per pound of carcass weight, okay, it decreases naturally when we increase the number of pigs sold per year. But also the salt cost will decrease according to the weight of the carcass, okay? So that's clear, as heavier are the pigs, as heavier are the carcass, lower will be the salt cost. So we'll have uh, this extra, extra margin. If we take in consideration 0.12 cents per pound, cost of, uh, cost of feed per pound, per pound we would have uh, extra $8 per, uh, of margin. Uh, if you consider margin over feed, over mortality and over yardage. 
If you don't, if you consider just over fee and over mortality, we would have extra ten dollars of margin per fee. Okay. In a normal distribution, we assume that average of in, in a normal distribution for average two hundred ninety pounds, taking consideration standard deviation of twenty five pounds, we understand that the top peaks we reach three three forty plus pounds. Okay, so we have a mission to deliver a peak efficient at this way. These top peaks need to be very cost effective. Okay. Uh, a coordinate market plan is essential to maintain the profitability. Okay. Here we have uh, two comparisons regarding performance at a, between 270 pounds peak market and 323 pounds peak market. We understand that uh, four weeks prior to sales in a 270 pound peak, we we'll have average daily, average daily gain about 2.1 pounds and feed conversion about 2.94. But if you move to 323 pound pigs market, on the four weeks prior prior harvesting, we would have average 1.92 uh, average they gain 1.92 pounds and 3.34 uh, feed conversion. It means that we decrease the <coughs> they gain, we will get worse on feed conversion, but anyway, it will be more profitable because of the volume that they're producing of the support. Okay. Uh, another point very important we need to take in consideration the extra cost, the extra cost per point per percent of mortality. Okay. So the the immunity status also will be you play uh, an important game on that. Here we have we can see how increase the cost per percent of mortality according with the increase of weight. So, from a peak with 206 uh, pounds uh, weight, weight to 300 pounds, uh, the, the cost of percent of mortality would increase from 1.2, for, for instance, to 1.4. It means for us that one peak uh, to, uh, to, with 206 pounds mortality would cost for us, uh, would be 16% <coughs> cheaper than one with 300 pounds. Okay? <coughs> We also need to consider that you need to have extra additional pens for these heavier peaks. Okay? Uh, regarding immunity, timing of vaccination <clears throat> and also duration of immunity, they are really an important player for us. Why? Because we're investing extra 108 pounds per peak and four or five weeks more that you keep them, so we have four or five weeks extra facility costs. So a uh, very good, uh, very, uh, an ideal uh, immune status is important for us. So we need to take into consideration uh, vaccination scheme and also the duration of the immunity. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, regarding uh, floor space allocations, we understand the heavier peaks, they need more square footage. That's clear for us. Uh, how we can get uh, more space in our system? We have two scenarios, okay? The first one is, some farms have a disease challenge. So it means that, for instance, instead of uh, placing 1,200 pigs, we'll place just 1,100, okay? And the another scenario is, uh, if the saw farm continue producing the same, but we'll take advantage of different uh, market weight strategy of layout of facilities, okay? It means that we, that uh, we need to uh, timely removal of course, and uh, how we mark the peaks. Okay, the, on this way we can provide extra space to our peaks uh, on the at the buyers. PIC base recommendation for 320 pounds peak is 8.5 8 square feet per peak. Okay, PIC optimum market weight calculator and service teams are prepared to use this tool for you, okay? Uh, taking consideration floor space and also feeder space, we have in here uh, that should show us different space per peak uh, regarding every daily game. We can see as, as higher is the, the square footage, we have uh, better performance, but when we increase the, the, feeder, the linear feeder space, 
per pig, we also have an uh, increase on, on performance. And we can see the impact on feed conversion is even higher. Uh, when you have more uh, space per pig, higher space per pig, we would have better feed conversion. And when we are restricted on, on, on floor space, when you increase the linear feeder space, we will have much better feed conversion. Okay? So we need to take in consideration all of these points. Uh, in feeder consideration, we will take, uh, we need to understand the needs for whole widths. So we need to understand how many animals we like to place per hole and also the width of each hole. Okay? So uh, we see here that uh, one pig with 275 pounds and one pig with 320 pounds, they don't have the same shoulder width. So expect, we can expect that one pig with 270 pounds, 75 pounds will have 12.4 inches of shoulder width and you would need 13.6 inches of feeder space. Uh, while one pig with estimate with uh, 320 pounds would have 13.3 shoulder width and would need about 15 inch feeder space. Okay, so we need to understand this and check this on our systems. Regarding uh, feeder capacity, so four weeks prior sales with one pig 200, with 207 pounds, we will have 6.1 pounds every day feed day. And if you go to, to 323 pounds on sales, this average daily feed intake will go to, to 6.38 pounds. So uh, if we are, we are using low energy diets, we will put on 10% on top of it. So it means that our pigs uh, with 323 pounds uh, at sale uh, with low energy diets, will intake more than seven pounds of meat per day. What does it mean? In one pen with 30 pigs, they will feed, per, they will feed them per day about 210 pounds. So uh, it shows us that simply assuring feed availability, so focusing on feeder capacity, we can really improve performance and decrease mortality. Okay? Uh, in the same situation, let's evaluate the adjustment on feeders. So, 207 pound pigs, we saw already that we have uh, 100 pounds per day uh, of feed intake, so we usually use 40% 4, 4, 4 pen coverage. Okay. If you go to, to 323 pounds pig, 30 pigs per pen, we will increase this by 4.5%. So, should be not the same adjustment. We should increase a bit the bank over. Could be 5%, could be, uh, could be 45%, could be uh, 50%. This we need to understand on our system, okay? Um, more feed intake means for us more water intake, okay? So one extra pound of feed intake means for us 0.3 gallons of water. <coughs> So here we have two different situations. Uh, low energy diet, we have higher feed intake. Uh, high energy diet, lower feed intake. So at 1200 head barn, uh, according with we increase the weight at sales, we will have increase of total water per day need. So we also need to understand the water available that we have on our barns, on our system, okay? Uh, on the facility, we need to pay attention that the shoulder high of the pigs will be different when we sell a pig with 270 pounds and 320 pounds. We can see this difference in inch that expected on the four different pigs. Okay, so it means for us that drinker high needs to be checked, evaluated, the same way the gate high if you are planning to have uh, heavy pigs, okay? So, uh, usually we tell the nipple height should be equal at the shoulder, uh, to the shoulder height of the pigs, okay? So we have different research, different trials, including some research that show us that, for example, nipples started at nine, 90 degrees angle, we should simply use this formula, according to the body weight, 
to get the exact height of the needle. <coughs> if we have nipples uh, uh, 50, per, uh, 50 degrees downward mounted, we should we could use this another formula. Okay. For bowling, when you, we have uh, balls, trinkers, the height of the lip should be 40% of the height of the smallest pin in the tank. In general, PIC recommends that the, the, that's what the nipple should be at the shoulder level of the smallest pin in the tank. And we never can forget that uh, each 16 days, pigs will grow 1.6 inches. It means that the nipples uh, should be not considered static or, or constant ones in, in high. We should uh, correct the high on uh, weekly or each two weeks basis. Okay? Uh, gate high. In considering gate high, we should uh, take in consideration two main <coughs> factors. First one is many, fin many finishers have been built with 32 inch uh, um, divided gates. Then uh, these gates may not protect pigs, pigs from jumping and mixing. And also, we need to understand that the feeders need to be well maintained and the feed drops properly secured. Why? Because on the case of removal of these feed tubs by the pigs, we will produce expensive uh, feed spills. And also, eliminating feed out outages is a positive step to minimize stress and fire. Okay? Uh, with new buildings, plans always to consider uh, improved gate height to 36 inches or maybe potential to 40, 40 inches. Okay? So, and we should review if we are planning to have uh, heavy things, we can plan some potential uh, remodeling of our, our uh, current facilities. Uh, load, regarding loading considerations, that cl that's clear on this graphic, uh, for example, a pig with 200 pounds, 230 uh, pounds, they would need 4.6, 4.5 square feet per feet during the transportation. A uh, 300 pounds pig would need about uh, six uh, uh, square feet per pig. So it shows us clear that as higher as we have uh, space for the pigs with the transportation, as lower will be our losses. Okay. So, uh, if we have a 270 pounds pig uh, at sales, uh, we, would need, we would be able to load, for example, 108 pigs per truck. But if you have 300, pigs, uh, 300 pounds pig, we will be able to load only 106 pigs okay? per truck. Uh, loading maximum five pigs at a time. If they are stressed or fatigued, uh, no, not more than three pigs. And avoid always to use a uh, 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 shocker on that. Okay? PIC proposed 36 inch wide aisle width for the new buildings. And uh, the last point would that we need to consider heat production. As the pig grows, it produces more heat. 300 pound, pounds pigs, you see, according to the graph, they will produce more or less 1,000 BTUs per hour. It means for us that one 1,200 barn with 300 pounds weight will produce about 1.4 million BTUs per hour. That's equivalent to four to six 250k BTUs forced air propane heaters run, running constantly. Then it's needed 14, from 14 to 16 <coughs> feet per minute per head as minimum ventilation rates. Then this is the ideal situation, uh, this, the, this curve for heavy pigs, where after 230 pounds, we do recommend a constant 6 to 1 degrees Fahrenheit. So always very close to the cold stress curve and, so far, and very far from the heat stress curve. So always after 230 pounds, Keep in here 61 uh, degrees Fahrenheit as desired room temperature.